Today on Things I Found Online, it's Comedy and Controversy, Part this. Part 1 was so offensive that this entire show should be devoted to an apology. But no, we're doubling down and diving into the most controversial stories in comedic history with our guest, look, comedian Matt Champagne. Hi. Plus the one and only Jack Daniel. I am the highly scandalous Joe Cipriano. Listen as I controversially... Did I say that? Shit. Controversially toss to Louise Palenker. We. Thank you, Joe. That was brazen. Yeah. Fans of the show, both of you, will recall that on episode 60, we addressed comedy and controversy with our friend Brad Sanders, and we made it through only the first half of the rundown. I love Brad. And we love Brad. And so we are, uh, he wasn't that controversial, though. He wasn't? Well, he's a nice fella. No, just very dapper. And so we are back for more with Matt Champagne. Yay, Matt. Hi. And Matt, uh, <laughs> let's initiate you by ceremoniously Googling you. Oh. The name of our show is called okay. Things I Found Online. We will find Matt Champagne online. And you can find him uh, online at home, friends. There play, he is. Play along with him. us. Now, Matt, who wrote oh. your bio? It's uh, it's a little wordy. It says- What's it say? Actor. Yeah. And then it stops. <laughs> That's it. That's all yeah. you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, Matt, you may have enjoyed Matt on Will and Grace. Ooh. He's in the yeah. famous cooking episode. It's very Do you hear that silence? <laughs> well, okay, that's oh, what people think. Episode. And what that's I, what people think of the cooking episode you, from Will and Grace. No, no, no. It's a great episode. All right, thank you. And you, you play a straighty. I do. Yeah. And you. <laughs> straighty. By straighty. the way, I take offense to that term, straighty. <laughs> and y- you have a face that people may feel that they know. So what else may they have seen you in? Hmm. Hmm. Well, what's on? Go. Let's. Yeah. Check why don't we go to you the IMDb? Bio? A young Woody on. Allen. Um, let's see, no. he's got, because I said so. A middle-aged so. Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah. What else is going on there? Because uh, I said so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a short film called uh, Class Photo uh-huh. that mm-hmm. I'm not even in that's right. still shooting right now. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, boy, this is, uh, I'm going to be in the movie Vice, the Christian Bale movie. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Cool. And wow. And it's, it's Christian Bale and Steve Carell and Sam Rockwell and Amy Adams and literally wow. a hundred other actors. And mm-hmm. so I shot it a year ago and I thought, I'm getting cut out of this movie. There's no way. <laughs> and I've heard from four people that my scene is actually still in, in there. Yes. So. Congratulations. Yes. Looking forward to that. So That's we have. Yeah. So if you want to see 30 seconds of me uh, <laughs> on screen I or stay here Christmas with us time. and get a whole hour. A whole hour. A whole yeah. hour. Mm-hmm. Matt's website. Yeah. Do you guys have it? It's. Um, it's there. It, there wow. it is. Now, isn't oh, that classy? Yeah, that looks very good. You know, you put a guy in black and white and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, exactly. oh, wow, he's real. The room goes silent. I don't know how black and white makes people <laughs> feel more real. Well, it's more important. But can I just yeah. cut, to the, can it, I put, cut to the tech room right now? Okay. You guys are like it, in yeah. tones of gray. Oh, yeah. look it at would that. look very nice on Matt's <laughs> To honor Matt. <laughs> very well done. That's, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, a black and white headshot room. gives it a very memorial sort of a vibe. You so know? now, Jack, <laughs> th- Joe, you haven't been with us in a while. No, I'm sorry. And um, and that's because you've been traveling. Traveling, yes. And Whereas, hosting uh, on the East Deal Coast. and No Deal. Well, with- I'm not hosting it. I'm the announcer for Deal or No Deal, okay. which is has come back after 10 years so, uh, oh, with Howie Mandel. So it was away for 10 years, and they spent that time packing suitcases with money. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the game is, it's based on three, I think, really important. You're really going to explain Deal or No Deal? Principles. Yeah. Really? Okay. Here's my yeah. impression of someone on a deal or no deal. Yeah. Okay. Is it that one? <laughs> Is it that one? How about that one? It's based right, exactly. on greed, I think it's that one. Greed, yeah. luck, and lust. Which is why it's on CNBC now. Oh. CNBC wants shows that involve greed and <laughs> some sort of um, mm, uh, guessing. You know, guessing. like like playing the stock market. Yeah. Playing so, the stock market. So yeah. what happens is people say, "I would like to pick a number." Yes. And then a lady. Between one and 26. And then a pretty lady opens a suitcase. And then Monty Hall, I mean, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. Says, would you God like, bless you, Monty Hall. Would you Hall. like to risk all this money mm. by opening. Uh, six more cases. And then and then an hour goes by. I don't yes. get it. I, I've never seen the show, no offense. But yes. I've heard about it. Yes. I've heard it's very popular. And I it was. don't. Yes. I don't get it. We don't get it. Well, can, is it okay? Would it be bad? podcasting if you explained the rules yeah. to Neil or very very Dealer. simple uh that it's pretty much what you just said 26 cases uh contestant um picks a case that is his or her case and then from there they the first round they have to open up six cases there's a board from a penny 
that goes all the way from a penny to a million dollars. So you want to open cases that are lower amounts and you just guess. Is there a buzzer if you get it wrong? Well, uh, it's not a, yeah, there is kind of a buzzer, I Mm -hmm. guess. And after you get past your six cases, then the banker makes an offer. Oh, the for bank, you to go the, away. There's a banker. I'll, I'll take An your unseen case. banker. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. she's in silhouette. We have a woman banker. Oh, this time it was a man silhouette. banker. A lady banker. Time. That's it's, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't exist. That's right. <laughs> it's a mythical program. Yeah. And then, it's like and, Game of Thrones. And through a process. And then there's the heartwarming stories of these people that need the money. Oh, and, they need you know, the money. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, it's exactly. a pitch show, too, in a way. Exactly. I yes. knew this model who was one of the suitcase models. Yeah. And I, I, she seemed offended when I and suggested that the show was simple and dumb. Well, it is simple. Uh-huh. And, I, you know, that's a, a matter of uh, opinion, whether it's dumb or not. But right. it is very simple. Right. And, and, Joe, and how did and it do and last that's night, just Joe. what I do. Like, I make fun of things that I've never seen. <laughs> like, I make fun of movies that I've never <laughs> right, seen. Right, exactly. But can we I, hear one Let's of, make one fun of, of Jack's uh, uh, career right now. Because <laughs> no, no, no. we've never Jack's, heard Jack's anything. Jack's very famous. Yeah. He's doing quite well <laughs> this yeah. holiday season. I would like to hear one of your lines. From Deal or No yes. Deal? Yes, what do you say? From so Universal good. Orlando Resort. It's a heart-pumping Fist banging, hour of deal or no deal. Fist wow. banging? Oh my god! Uh, fist pump bumping. Okay. How much Fair do something. I owe you? That's toe thumping. Uh, is he's one. so good. Yeah, he's so good. He's you should so work. Good. You should work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so we. Uh, so we're, enough of that. We're delving into comedy and controversy. Yes. And uh, when we did our first show with Brad, we thought that was just going to be the whole entire show, but. We got so caught up in all the controversy that we didn't make our way through the rundown. And then this way, I don't, ha- I didn't have to write a rundown. It was already the well, second half of that show. It's almost like so, cheating, isn't it? You no, didn't, no, no, no. You really no. didn't have to do it's any work. It's like what Rachel way Maddow to go into a show. does when there's breaking news one day. Yeah. The next day, she just does the show that yes, she Yes, you're right. Sure. She just sure. uses what she had prepared for the day before. Why not? I get it. Okay. Um, I, in my imagination, that's what she does. Okay, so we're going to dive right back into the number one list of the week, where we were in episode 60 with number seven. And the and number seven, coming in at number seven, most controversial comedians of all time, is Sarah Silverman. Hmm. Can, can we have a quick run, rundown of one to five? I did get the email, but like, mm. what, what was... What were they, Dina? Well, oh, gosh, from last week, huh? Well, we we had Lenny Bruce. We had... Uh, okay. We, we Andy Kaufman. We spent a lot of time on Andy Kaufman. Oh, right. Andy. Yeah, he offended mostly other comedians, though. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and I could, I could see the, the young comedians that are uh, inspired by him, and they are very irritating. I have to say. <laughs> we had so co- controversial within the comedy community, not so much audiences. I think he mostly right. befuddled audiences. Yeah, yeah, and he thought that that was an example of high artistry, and I think he was yeah. wrong. So uh, <laughs> he's controversial in that he was wrong about what he thought right. uh, good comedy. What's that? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. We talked about how he would wrestle ladies. Did you, and d- did you determine whether he is dead or not? Because it could be we just another bit. We did know? not. A lady wrestler. That's ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> I have my running bit for the day. Yeah. All right. So maybe someone at home can look up the show and remind us okay. who the top six That's enough. Are. I get it. Lenny right. Bruce. So Sarah um, Silverman. Okay. Sarah she, Silverman. Wa- she likes to walk the edge. She once yeah. said that 9-11 was... The worst day of her life because that's the day that she found out that there are 900 calories in a soy chai latte. In response to Mitt Romney's intentions to overturn Roe v. Wade, she posted fake photos of herself before and after an abortion. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So she's, you know, she's very adorable. I'm offended by the fact that they were fake. That, that, that's what I'm offended by. <laughs> so Put far, the real stuff on there. So. Matt is offended a lot. He is. He, he's <laughs> easily. That's why he's here. We yes. knew we could get him to blush. So, uh, thoughts on Sarah Silverman? Anyone? Love her. She's funny. I love her. Yeah. She's great in the roasts. She's really great she in the roasts. She said yeah. something way more controversial very recently, though, that's not on there. What was it? Let's look it up. She was Google talking it. about, oh, she was explaining, I hate talking about him, but he's everywhere. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, we know who that you That guy. Yeah. Is, guy there, is there a code name we can come up with for him? Orange Man. <laughs> Orange Man? Okay. Yeah. Orange Man. That's, mm-hmm. that's good. Okay. Orange. Orange Crush. He doesn't deserve a clever nickname. He no, doesn't give out them. He doesn't. Right. He doesn't. Or he, he, she was talking about uh, how when they were friends, they're still friends, but when they were knew each other a long time ago mm-hmm. in New York. I can say anything, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we know what he's accused of, right? Um, yes. A lot okay. of things. Yeah. Money yeah, laundering. But the main thing. <clears throat> the oh, grabs. with ladies? Maybe we're not talking about the same guy. Uh, or, or orange guy, I thought would be a good nickname for him because he does have 
He's we, bald, but he's got red hair. And oh my big, God, we're wrong. He's oh, a huge, no, Matt, oh, we're I talking about somebody else with, with initials. I thought Orange initials. Man was an okay slang. Oh, Matt, slang. That's very good. Okay, so you're talking about Harvey Weinstein. No, 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 no she's talking no. about Louis yeah, C.K., I, I think. Oh, Louis C.K. Yeah. Okay, yeah, oh. we can talk about him. All right. He yeah, was on I, the list. I know we can talk about he him. Was... I just hate talking about him because okay. I think I think he's a bad guy. No, no. I I mean we we addressed him in one through six. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. okay. So All right. we did but, talk about but him. What she said about you didn't you didn't see this like three weeks ago. She was t- telling about how when they knew each other in New York, they were they've been friends for a long time. And she Yeah, there it is. So oh, that I don't have to say I that. guess I missed that. What with mm. all the Trump news, and she and said the she want she. There were a couple of times where she wanted him to, wow. where she was because she was like, yeah. If she, this is her quote. If you could find the quote, I would rather. I don't want to. You'd rather. I really don't want to. Don't want to paraphrase. It. Yeah, I understand. Uh, F yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> uh, is what she said. She said that. Yeah. Mm. Wow. But sometimes she said, "F no, gross. Let's get pizza." Uh. <laughs> so, but then there's another part in there, and I can't find it right now. But she said, "Yeah, it's like it. It was amazing. It was like science." <laughs> I guess she's saying that okay. women don't. We don't usually get to watch men do that to themselves. So maybe that You're part missing of it. Out. I You're guess really it would depend out. on what kind of friendship you have. I don't have those friendships. I. You know what? That says a lot. That's I don't. I, they need to close the door when they pee. Good. So, <laughs> no, I don't see that. So, uh, so I would say the most offensive thing about her is that she she kind of. She was just one more person to go. Hey, look, man! Comedians are freaks. Leave, you know? Right, right. And I didn't, I didn't like that at all. There's oh, lots so, of comedians that are freaks that are bad people. So like you that. felt that, I'm very judgmental. Can, does, does it come off? No, but I, I, I kind of. Well, no, but okay. Matt, there's layers to this, and I kind of want to kind of like burrow in and find yeah. out: Are you offend? Are you offended because she said a thing that sort of like gave him permission to do that, or that she maybe didn't think those things, but said them to get him off a hook? Or which... I think she's all she's doing is just uh, being one more person to say, look, comedians are not regular people. They come from all kinds of dark, traumatic places. And when they do things like this, this is this is why. But just, isn't just that, rather than what, she, what I wish she would do them? and go, my friend Louie is a bad guy and I'm yeah. going to stop being friends with okay. him. That's what I think. That's what I would love for her to say. Mm-hmm. But I and don't she's think... not because I think. She uh, loves comics so much because she sees them as wounded, wounded. Well, why do you think you should have to tell her how she should feel, though? What's that? She, why do you think you, you should be able to tell her that? Because why, why would you I'm a classy guy oh, I get and that. I'm and correct. black and white website, Jack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, did you see that website? You know what? I yeah, forgot about the black and white. I, I retract right right everything I just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. And um, here's the other, here's something I'd like to it's add to that thought, Matt. I don't think that comedy is the only career within which a guy has done that. I think Bill Clinton wanted Paula Jones to kiss it, and you know, the kissing could could have led elsewhere. I think is what he was hoping. Probably to drugs. So <laughs> that, that's politics, or any powerful man may have said, "Hey, look at my thing," and there could have been some woman who wants to, you know, play with the big boys who would have just laughed it off or been like, "I'm fine with it. Really, it's just sex. Relax, everybody." Uh, so maybe it- just not comedy, but. All across society, we need to say like, hey, you know what? If it's not okay, it's just not okay. And it's okay to love the person and say, that behavior, not okay. You're going to need to check in and get yourself some help. Hmm. It's it's Jack, right? Of course. Yeah. You think that's the order of things? Like it starts with like really mm-hmm. kinky sex stuff. I think stuff it's marijuana, it goes kissing, to drugs from there. Heroin, and then you're back to kissing again. It's pretty hard. It's pretty <laughs> oh, okay. It so it's more of a circular thing. It's a circle. It's a circle. <laughs> it's a circle okay, so I, I think that we've just learned a lot there. All you got to do, guys, is move through it. <laughs> just move through it and you'll come back around. Do it right. in black but and white. Stop. Everyone you got to stop. When you get back to kissing, you got to stop again. That's Otherwise, you know, that's where you that's draw the line. Keep going. Yeah. What I want to what I want to kind of like investigate is like how often do women just because they want to be in that league roll with whatever's happening like, "Oh, I'm cool" when really you're not. Right. But walking out would mean I don't get to hang out with these people. Can we take any calls? Oh, oh, damn. Damn. We, oh well, we have a chat room. We have With chatting on Facebook. Actually, we, you could you could probably speak to that more than. Well, I don't know if you want to I get into it, but well, yeah, I can. Yeah. I can speak to it I, at the comedy store, for example, which Ugh. is to me the most toxic of yeah. those kind of male virility types of environments. There was a there were a lot of things that happened to me that I was not okay with, yeah. and I stuck it out because Mitzi had said I was a regular, and this means 
you have to do X, Y, and Z, Mm -hmm. which means you spend the whole day with guys waiting for your turn and they do whatever they, it's not, you don't get raped. It's just very uncomfortable. You get bent over a desk and dry humped and you, you know, like. Not literally. Yeah. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. And you're like, get off me. But you don't leave. No, you have to stay there, but. Are, are they doing it also to undermine you so you don't do a great or are you that you that you open up a time period where they can take it? You're yes, gonna get the they, heck out? They, they kind of they try to either scare you away yeah. or make you feel like if you're not sleeping with somebody, you're just taking up stage time. So you're it, you're you, you need to get out of the way. Mm-hmm. And they also they form little packs. They exclude you. They don't guys right. that will talk to you at other clubs won't talk to you at the comedy store. Um, Have you ever seen that, Matt? In any of the sure, yeah. yeah. I don't go to the comedy store anymore. Yeah, me because uh, it, it's depressing. It's mm. it's a literally it's literally a dark place. Wow. It's, yeah. a black, it's black. It's painted black, black on the mirrors. outside and yeah. the inside. I don't think the comedy store makes that kind of a guy, but I do believe that it attracts that kind of a guy. Interesting. Mm-hmm. There is a the kind of there is a breed of stand up comic who uh, is a very bad type of guy mm. who wants the freedom to just barf out whatever awful thing he wants to say. Mm-hmm. And that kind of a guy, when he goes to the comedy store, not so much on state. I think the audience is there. Are great. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with the crowd. Yeah, they're usually from out of town, but, and it's a famous yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. Are, the yeah. audiences are great. That that that's not what's wrong with it. There's a certain breed of comic though that feels very very comfortable hanging out on the patio there. Yeah, and just saying whatever the fuck they, they want to yeah. say. They say they especially say, to the women, and it and when <clears throat> that kind of comic finds that environment, they go ah, uh, found home. it. Yeah, home. Just, I, wow, and they get very comfortable, and they uh, and they, I. Band up. It, yeah, I just I, wonder why it got that way. Well, yeah, I mean, but aren't there I analogs think, of that in in many walks of life, not just comedy? <clears throat> yes, not just we, we can definitely do a whole show analyzing how the comedy store got that way. Mm-hmm. And I and I have to say, and this is really controversial, but here's the show for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, Part the, two, by the way, it was owned by a the woman. Yeah. It was owned by a woman, right. and it should have been quite the opposite. Yeah, but she, I think she pitted comics against each other because she wanted them, right. she wanted their attention. And she needed them looking to her and seeking her approval. And that made her feel powerful. Interesting. And I think that place being owned by a woman who had that type of personality is what led to it becoming a toxic place for okay. yeah. uh, Interesting. for a, that sort of male energy. There's a very popular show there called The Roast Battle. Like They've been around for about three or four years now where it's different comics roasting each other so mm-hmm. it's a very specific kind of joke it's an mm-hmm. insult right you're so da 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 or they they set it up with this guy is da 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 so it's da-da-da. and it's the meanest yeah stuff that you can come up with right but that idea that roasting one another thing has been at the comedy store oh, since yeah. the beginning like the vibe of the place i'm talking mm-hmm. about yeah you have to constantly be jabbing at somebody and defending yourself and jabbing at somebody and defending yourself wow and, uh, right so wow. it's like an alpha dog kind right. of place yeah all yeah. right so we're moving on to number six and it's going to be okay. we're <clears> just <throat> going to ratchet up the controversy yeah, okay we have yeah. rose ambar <laughs> mm. she's called israel a nazi state and although she does although she does support same-sex marriage she has used a variety of homophobic words as insults of course she famously grabbed her crotch and spat while singing the national anthem and ran for president as the peace and freedom candidate this was all before she was fired from her own show after becoming a QAnon believer and posting racist tweets. QAnon, I, uh, I've only just recently. It's seen, fascinating. Yeah. What, can, does can anybody give me a rundown of QAnon? Can somebody help me with that too? Yeah, I, I, I need help. Oh, yeah. okay. Can, so, right, this is interesting. Do you Nobody know more knows. than me, Dina? Because I, I, I know a bit. Okay, so there is a. Um, is it on Reddit? Who, Lane? Do you know more about this than I do? Does anyone in this room no, know what okay. QAnon is? QAnon, I just know I'm, I'm from going. what I see on Twitter that it's kind of tied to like the Mike Cernovich sort of like rampant deep state conspiracy right. stuff. Right, yeah. it's a deep state conspiracy on, on which theory side? that says right side. Th- there's a Right guy- side, but it's not like... So it's against the it's deep not state the same conspiracy as, thing. I mean, it leans right, but it's not like... It's not the same camp of like the like yeah. Trump defenders. It, they go after... It's basically mm-hmm. just like these politicians are pedophiles. This person is like controlling your mind it's just like 
insane. Yeah, so, so it's it's a guy who's so calling himself QAnon on on a subreddit, and he he he's telling everybody who's reading him that actually Mueller and Trump are working together to rid the world of pedophiles, and that we need to just let Trump get rid of all okay. the pedophiles. If that's true, right? Uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> But we think it's. I, I mean, for get, they're getting rid of pedophiles. Who's going to get in the way of that? We think that QAnon <laughs> is just really trolling everybody, and that, and so there's got people have been showing up at Trump rallies wearing QAnon hats and T-shirts. But and if stuff. you say Cernovich, that means that that's like a it's a doxing sort of a group, right? Is that how they attack people? They they sort of put your address up there and your resume out there, and they try, they get you fired, like James Gunn. Yeah, got fired. Right. I'm not sure if it's like the same. I've just seen them in the same conversations on twitter like i I, it might be a completely separate thing that i just i've seen like the same type of threads of like this these people are spreading lies that same idea i don't know if they're connected is roseanne then talking and quoting QAnon? or yes and in her tweets and when she was attacking valerie jarrett for example and calling her you know nate talking about her appearance and that she was the child of whatever parents and then and then her and then her apology was like, well, I didn't even know she was black. I mean, like, you can't call anyone you know, the child of an orangutan, whatever the hell I she said. I think Roseanne Barr is less controversial than she is mentally ill. I mean, I, I, yeah. I think that's something. But that's I'm something, sorry to laugh that at that. That, right that sounds like yeah. a, a joke, but yeah. it's like we, we always talk about Roseanne Barr in terms of her outspokenness mm-hmm. or her big mouth or mm-hmm. her rebelliousness or her opinion mm-hmm. and you would be rebellious like that too if your brain wasn't working right. properly the and way think- that hers isn't but that never gets talked about we have to remember she is emotionally unstable and extremely mentally ill you know what i want to see i want to see a documentary uh about the people that had to work with roseanne yeah. over all those years oh mm-hmm. man i want to see it do- i want to see what it was like Having to work for and with and be around that unstable woman. Mm-hmm. But how about don't give her show a reboot because everybody knew that about her. Money, money, money. Yeah. And, it, and it was making that money. Yeah. yeah. And the other good example of like what a company will do to stay in good graces with someone that's making them a lot of money is remember the Charlie, the whole Charlie Sheen thing. Right. Yes. CBS bent over backwards to stay in business with a very unpleasant guy. By the way, this is Matt Champagne, judgmental uh, stand-up guy. <laughs> and Speaking not any here. of the other people in this. <laughs> at, number, at number five, we have Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Back in 2001, after 9-11, Maher disagreed with President George W. Bush for calling the terrorists cowards. Maher said, our military is more cowardly for lobbing cruise missiles from 20,000 miles from 2,000 miles away. Staying in the airplane when it hits a building, say what you want about it, it's not cowardly. Mm. That joke got him fired from Comedy Central. It was considered too politically incorrect for a show with that title. His new show, Real Time, has been running since 2003. Yeah. That's a wow. Long time. I don't personally... How come he didn't call it real politically incorrect? Like really, really. Real time? I don't find Bill Maher controversial. I just find him... Gross. <laughs> Sexy. Many well, women do. What do you want to say about Bill? even the women that like hook up with him will say, "Yeah, he's gross, but, but Bill, something gross." I want to hear about <laughs> something I like about hold gross. that thought about women hooking band. up I'll with him because I'm fascinated. Band. Okay, but I don't know why. I don't know. But to me, Bill Maher and John Oliver and and and, and Conan, they're all just comedians who are who are discussing politics in oh, yeah. a healthy way that shines a light on what the hell is wrong with all of us I, i'm with you i think we've, we've gone way too far in the direction of every you say one thing and you're done i think that's a mistake and i think it's one that we have to correct soon because it's just every eventually we're all going to be outside of everyone else's circle and it's guys like bill maher that are telling the truth and that's what i think is interesting about comedy as it intersects with controversy because that's what moves society forward is like shining a light on something using humor and then everybody laughing and going oh my god that's true i think we have some QAnon stuff is, <gasps> this, Q- is this QAnon related no are, but are I you say, QAnon? bill maher is kind of awful <laughs> just because i like some of his stuff but he's like super islamophobic like he has his reasons for having that that opinion and but it's like not th- yeah I, not to anti- me it gets Islam. past opinion and he's just like he, he just like they're not anti-islam they're sort of pro-feminist and he doesn't he doesn't right. particularly think it's they're the most compatible do you think he should be deplatformed for having a, a, a view that's you don't a, a no support? no i just okay. don't watch i it. think see that's healthy <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i i think it's i mean he doesn't yeah I, I agree with you the one like 
the 9-11 thing shouldn't have made him lose a platform. He's a comedian. That's what right. you do is make but jokes. You work, but, you know, you work for somebody, they can fire you. Yeah, that's exactly. the way it is. But right. he, I don't think he meant that. That that sentence there that's mm-hmm. not cowardly about mm-hmm. the yeah. pilots, that's not even a <clears throat> joke. No, it's, it's just not a, a joke. It's just, yeah. It's just yeah. an, it's an and, and when he said it, he said it in conversation. It wasn't part of a monologue. It yeah. wasn't part of a, you know, it, it was he was just in the midst of talking to his guests right. about, they were talking about what was cowardly and what was brave and stuff. But I think a lot of his Islamophobia comes from his hatred of religion too, though. He has, yeah. a, true. He has a deep sort of hatred of religion across the board. Mm-hmm. He mocks That's it, true. he maligns it. And if your religious beliefs are leading to the, uh, you know, deaths of people, he's gonna be even more, you know. Mm-hmm critical of it i guess but now i uh, want to hear about the women who slept with him. i ask them there are many uh go outside there might be one Could we have an itemized <laughs> list <laughs> walking around <laughs> so you're saying he he's he's busy i i you know he what it's been a while it's it's been Hollywood a while i don't know social. if he's as as busy but he's never seemed uh, I, he's never seemed to be wanting for the there's a room i look there are rumors Oh, this is a show about controversy. Go, oh, come okay. on, let's hear it. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, the kinds of women that you might say are professional. Like he I goes see. to the Playboy Mansion. Like, where does a Bill Maher go now that they've shut down the Playboy Mansion? Uh, you know, what is he I, to do? I yeah. think a guy like Bill Maher will find a find a place. I think he'll figure it out. I think out. he just doesn't want to be in a relationship. And if you want <laughs> sex and you don't want a relationship, sometimes Maybe that's the controversy here. It's Bill, <laughs> it's time to settle down. <laughs> settle down, Bill. He doesn't Come on, Bill. We're going to find a nice lady, Bill. <laughs> Plenty Number. of nice ladies that will get high with you, Bill. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Oh that's, my God. that's really the controversy. That you know really I mean? is. When really will is. Bill find love? <laughs> that's what I think about. I think Bill don't you, is... Don't you worry that Bill Maher is never going to be in love? I, I think we could build a show around it. Because I was wondering, <laughs> if you're Bill Maher, you can't go on Tinder. People will be like, Bill Maher. Well, that's Bill Maher. Right. Yeah, so they'll be like, there's a Bill site. There is no a way. site for cele- it's, a, it's a dating site for celebrities. Really? Who else? Guys, is, is it's Ray. Is it Ray? Uh, Ray something? Ray? Really? Seriously, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's it's find It's for that. famous people. It's for oh, very on, lazy you know famous this. people. <laughs> wow. So like, is it... You have to have a the blue check mark from Twitter. Oh, What's yeah, it called? You, you go. got to be a... Uh, I got that. Uh, certified. Joe's got that. Certified or whatever it is. <laughs> so are the, are the celebrities... Got you you yeah. got to have are your the license win- to be a check mark. So the women yeah. that they Raya, look at... Yeah, there it is. What is the celebrity dating app? Are the women celebrities too? Of like, course. You, See, my wife won't let me do this. So it's celebrities finding... <laughs> Can you imagine a celebrity and you get dinged? Like you get rejected. Oh, man, that's by the lowest. Another, by yeah. another celebrity. <laughs> yeah. So it's celebrities dating celebrities, right? That's right. Wow. That's right. So this is how Justin Bieber winds up with all these... And if you're not a celebrity and you go on there and you try to copy a page or something like that, uh-huh. you'll, be, you'll get blocked right out. You'll wow. be uh, you're out of there. You can't even wow. look at it. You can't even look at it. Wow. Guys, don't go there now. Don't go. Unless you're a celebrity. Do not Number four, go. Richard Pryor, drawing from his life, his own life experiences, he shed light on issues like poverty, racism, and drug abuse. His approach was groundbreaking. Without Pryor, the landscape of modern comedy would look very different. So Matt Champagne, yeah. a lot yeah. of people credit Richard Pryor as being the guy. Is is he the guy for every comedian? Uh, no, because I I, I I don't have anything. Look. I'm gonna admit my ignorance right now. I don't. I don't know a lot about Richard. You don't know about. <laughs> but do you know about his comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one special. There's that's not even a special. It's from the early '70s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's on stage at what was then the Hollywood Improv. It was if it was there then. Okay. And it does not go well. It's not a good set. Like mm, really? it's not like like the audience is not really enjoying it. But he gets very personal. He talks about his childhood and the things he had to do for money, and and it was it was pretty grim wow. stuff. And towards the end, he finally goes, "Yeah, this wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be." Like he <laughs> yeah. he kind of so he kind of said, and that that was what was interesting about it. But is it on uh, YouTube? Uh, you can get it on. You can get the DVD on Netflix. That's what I did. I'm a DVD guy, by the way. Oh yeah, I like you to, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah they I still, still like have the old it. DVD. That's right. Yeah, I, I still have my DVD that. player. Yeah. I will walk to the post office with my DVDs. I kind of miss it. I just got other people DVD with their player. DVDs look at me, and we kind of like <laughs> wink at each other, like Fight Club. Is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in it. I'm in it. Well, I mean, let's it, not talk about that's it. That's when you really get the director's um, <laughs> remarks and everything. Yeah, that's what I miss about anywhere else. We're getting off topic, but but DVDs. You get the director's commentary yeah. and all that kind of I stuff. You can't that. get that with streaming. I do, can you? I do too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's like I made a movie 
and I had I had accumulated all kinds of special features, so I just made a second movie, yeah. and I called it Special Features and put it up on Amazon Streaming Pay Per View, because oh, that, oh, don't worry, sorry. you're off camera. Oh, that's right, I <laughs> forgot I'm I, on camera. <laughs> because it, no, I, no. She, she's getting me more water. Yeah, so. I do you, think Dina. it's okay because it's not really a TV show; it's just a peek inside a radio show. Wink. Um, I do think <laughs> that, that when you make a movie, there's lots of extra stuff that people who who like the movie would love to see so sure i just threw mine up there and then i put up a lot of youtubes with special features oh, i, I want to see a deal no deal where joe narrates and watches people choosing the wrong box and goes no you stupid, you stupid. <laughs> yeah. like why would you do any of the suitcases have wheels no, no, I don't. I don't believe so. Does anything jump out of a suitcase? No, like, no, is there, no, is there, no, is there no, like a black that. mamba no. snake that, would that comes out? <laughs> does anyone like get? Jack in the does box, it get bi- kill bellish? That's deal, no deal. <laughs> right. Does death. anyone get in trouble <laughs> for having much. too much liquid inside their suitcase? <laughs> no, I don't. No, believe, no. <laughs> no does, only only three oh, ounces of liquid. I see where you're okay. going with that. Does TSA yeah. come out? Yeah, yeah, does right, TSA exactly. <laughs> come out. Is there a yeah. do not fly? I'm sorry, okay. this is a little too big. You cannot. This is not carry on. It's do any of the suitcases have combination locks? And the model is trying to get us. Like, Wait, number seventeen. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Go. How hold many on. of those uh, models have slept with Bill Maher? Oh, oh my see. goodness. <laughs> I bet it's not zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's not zero. Oh. You, you, That's a good name for a game show, a right? Six. It's, it's not, not zero. zero. <laughs> Tonight on It's Not Zero I with Matt be, Champagne. I want to be a game show host. <laughs> yes, really oh my God, Matt, you you'd be that. so good. Yeah. I just, you would I just, be good. I got to make up my game, though. Yeah. Oh, but he'll I don't be, know. He'll you be got a good announcer. title. You he started him, with a good title. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be your announcer. I have a good title for a game show. Uh, what the hell was that? It's kind of a, it's <laughs> it's a sound thing where yeah. you like they play sounds. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of sounds. Well, what do you say? Tim Conway Jr. used to play. What oh. what the hell is Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson saying? saying? Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It was hard yeah. to tell. It was. It, yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. It really yeah. was. Yeah, I can't believe you never heard that. No, oh I never my did. god! Oh, that was yeah, it was a while yeah, ago. It was awesome. on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. What so. the hell is Jesse Jackson? Saying? Number three, Bill Hicks. One of his more famous quotes. You ever notice that everyone who believes in creationism looks really unevolved, like <laughs> eyes real close together, big furry hands and feet. I believe God created me in one day. Yeah, looks like he rushed it. <laughs> um, so see, Bill Hicks. See, the, that quote is from his act, mm-hmm. whereas the Bill Maher quote yes. was not from his act. You know what I mean? So Bill Maher got mm. in trouble for but he also got really trouble. giving his personal opinion. But he is but a comedian who is controversial. I he think will, and this yeah. season he said mm. the N word. He was interviewing somebody. I can't remember. Who, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just oh, he, yes, as he as right. I heard him say it, I was like, oh, that's going to be a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I checked Twitter. <laughs> yeah, and it was. Yeah. And he, ap- he apologized. You can't just say that. Yeah. Yes, he did. But yeah. so yeah. I'm glad he still has his show because I was worried there for a moment. I know that, you know, Lane was rooting for, oh, man, hope, hope this gets it. Uh, number two is George Carlin. In oh, the 70s, man. his seven dirty words routine listed so the seven words you can never say on television. Didn't the you question here George is, can I you say George them Carlin. on he's, podcasts? He's yeah. can, is, will there be anyone in this room who's willing to say them on a podcast? Uh, they changed the landscape of broadcast radio and television awesome. because in 1978, the Supreme Court ruled that the routine was indecent but not obscene, which gave the FCC the power to prohibit any broadcast they deemed indecent during hours when children were more likely to be watching or listening. Specifically, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. local mm-hmm. time, the rest of the time is known as safe harbor hours where the FCC won't take action against indecent material. The fact that there are still very few curse words or nudity on network television during... <laughs> Prime time is because of George Carlin. All right, so who <clears throat> did you put up the the seven words? Is anyone? Oh, the one? seven words. We have yeah. a volunteer. I, I'm not willing. Are you willing to say them out loud? Uh, I only know three of them. Do you? Which ones? Uh, well, do you know? uh, by, by memory, up, she'll put them up. Oh, okay. Do we have them? Am I going to say them? Can you see if, them? If you if you dare, if you can. Uh, yeah. oh, there they are. Zoom if you can in. See so them. one is um, the S word. Then uh, Why then is we there have a, a radio P, station logo. Then we have an F. Uh, yeah. Okay. The words are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, piss, fuck. Cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Now that's a strange order. <laughs> yeah, but when he said it, it was melodious. Yeah, you know he had a. You know the last one doesn't, yeah. shit doesn't sound cunt, so bad. Cocksucker, motherfucker, last one, tits. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so, I mean it's like wow. What makes a word indecent? Because I will give you the origin of S H I T. By the way, I would like to point out right. that you guys faded out on that list, that censorship. Uh, <laughs> like, they, oh, had uh, it, they had uh, it up on the screen there for a second. Are we still on Facebook? I feel like I'm being stifled so, a little bit. Creative. A word is really just a collection of letters, right? So S-H-I-T, that simply means um, when they 
in the olden days yes. when they had cargo ships with like many layers deep uh-huh. underneath the 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 water, uh-huh. whatever that's called, yeah. the, where the water Surface. is, water, water, line, water line. Yeah. yeah. If it, if it was like manure and they put it too far down and it got too hot, it would explode. So they used to post on it store high in transit. Oh. And that's all that S-H-I-T. means. S H I T. I thought yes. it was a dramatic sort of thing. It just sounds like it, doesn't it? It's a good word to say. It makes you feel it, like it you've work. unloaded, yeah. if you will. Um, <laughs> but that. But most words are just. Bo- <laughs> I mean, comedian. all words are just. Bo- I don't think tits belongs on. There. No, I was. Mm-hmm. I agree. But I, you I couldn't. Think that you couldn't say it. On, you couldn't say it on TV. That's the at point. At the time, I guess. At yeah. the time. Yeah. Back in the. Can you say 60s. tits on television now? I believe you. I think well, you might be able actually, to get away with it. Uh, you know, I think when, it depends when on the Trump hour. was After saying shithole, they f- or when he was saying grab them by the pussy, they, ble- they, they bleeped they, hole. They finally stopped <laughs> bleeping that stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you can't cover the president and continue bleeping what he says because he's always saying things that yeah that yeah. are <clears throat> not you know George. These guys are giggling at something. What did you find? Seven more words or <laughs> we just googled. Can you say tits on TV? Oh, okay. and, and what, what, what's the answer? answer? We're still we're deep in the research right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, TV TV is so wide range now. What's Bro- TV broadcast? Can I just say that they, okay. so oh they, network television? Yeah. You can't say tits on network. They, 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 maybe after ten, you they can, Googled though. it, but then clicked on, on above where it says images, which is why they're <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that's what they look like. <laughs> didn't, okay. Uh, didn't NYPD Blue like back in the nineties? Didn't they have they, a, an episode sh- where somebody? Well, yeah, they showed Dennis Franz's rear end. Ass, but yeah. that's that worse hot. than that that's worse hot. than saying cocksucker. True. No, he's hot. That's bad. You All don't right. put Dennis Franz's butt Why on national not? television in 1994. And he was in makeup for three hours for that shot. Yeah, too. they kicked him off Raya right after. Yeah, they cleared of, the set for that shot. I bet of, they cleared the set. But think of all the boobs you've seen before you saw Dennis Franz's butt. You don't see bare. Oh, I'm thinking boobs of the right, 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 right now. Before. It's Sorry. really nice. Yeah, Bing you. Crosby? It's old Bing it's Crosby. It's so Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to that tree, cut me a switch, I want to beat you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever got that deep, actually. Uh, Nathaniel. Oh, Sorry. Nathaniel. Poor Nathaniel. Um, he wasn't a good dad, was he? <laughs> he was, no, was he was horrible. Rough, no. All right, so Kathy Griffin. Who wants to talk Kathy Griffin? Mm. Fellow ginger. All right, so Kathy Griffin. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah let's. Uh, yeah. Fell on ginger. Sure, so I'm we sure all know. Well, I have say. particular insight into her psyche. It's true. <laughs> her career was derailed for a year by a scathing Hollywood backlash and blacklist, plus a no fly list exile, as she found herself at the center of a two month federal investigation for what has come to be known as the photo. Yes. The photo, Griffin holding a Trump mask covered in ketchup. She shared the photo with the caption There was blood coming out of his eyes. Blood coming out of his whatever. This, of course, is quoting <laughs> what he said about Megyn Kelly. With that, the wheels came off her truck. She was unemployable. Did the punishment fit the crime? Do you know why Trump said blood coming out of her whatever? Because he doesn't know the name for that word. <laughs> and he doesn't. Know, he doesn't know what it's called. He also doesn't so know what females say, vaguely do right. once a month. He doesn't know what menstruation <laughs> is. Bleeding? No, he's not quite clear. And by the way, I'm about sixty five percent sure. So <laughs> I generally like, where I, does no, the no, blood no. come I, from? I generally Melania, know what it is. Where exactly? <laughs> it's got to do with her guys, reproductive do not cycle. Google that, please do not. <laughs> It's got to do with some kind of a cycle or something like that. But it does, right. Anyway, uh, yeah, Kathy, she said she was blacklisted. I don't. She was. Bot, she I lost don't, investigation. Everything. Yeah, the but, FBI came over, Matt. Okay, that's terrifying. Right, but but after that year or so, mm-hmm. her first gigs were where? Do you remember? Times Square, the Carnegie Hall. Oh, Carnegie Hall. I would wow. love to be blacklisted. Is that right? Wow. Like that. But for a year, it was really scary. She didn't know yeah. if she was going to have a career. She really. How do you get like, to Carnegie Hall? Blacklist, blacklist, blacklist. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So I, I don't, I, I don't think if Trump hadn't been in office, she wouldn't have been investigated. For they, they, they have hung other presidents in effigy and and had pinatas made out of them, and people weren't investigated. When I think of Kathy Griffin, this is what yes. I think. I don't think about the whole Trump stuff. I think about how she got popular, which was getting up on stage and basically gossiping about celebrities she would tell though, stories but she's about, amazing but after a while it's like so wait a second every famous person you've run into is a piece of shit no, that, no, no. that's what i'm supposed to believe because I've been every to the story shows, she has about every she fam- likes a lot of the people matt okay well yeah. then i guess i liked her book that that's the best thing i could say i, I read her book okay. and i read it very quickly and i thought that that was good. if she likes you she's she says i i like this person i, I it seems to me that she doesn't like a lot of people though well she'll hmm. 
I don't think I think she doesn't like people that don't have a sense of humor about being joked about. So if you're like Clay yeah. Aiken and you tell her I don't want you joking about me, <laughs> she's going to joke about you. You're going to yeah. get joked about. Yeah. yeah. And if you're someone cool like Suzanne Summers <clears throat> who gets joked about and is cool and just goes back to her thigh master, then Kathy Griffin <laughs> comes over for dinner and hides her diet coke because Suzanne Summers doesn't believe in that. Yeah. And that's just it's not a joke that's hurtful. It's just a funny thing about what happens when you hang out with Suzanne Summers. She will confiscate the Diet Coke that you brought in your purse. So that's funny and it's not necessarily nasty. It's just cute. Right. Um, but I think do you guys think that women like Kathy Griffin more than men for the most part? What? A- ask that question. Is it like again? a Three Stooges <laughs> thing where like women love Kathy Griffin oh, and you guys oh. don't get why and you guys love the Three Stooges and we don't get why. When I think <laughs> of Kathy Griffin fans, I think of mostly gay men. I think gay men love Kathy Griffin. I think I'm a gay man. <laughs> I'm not saying that they're, that's the <laughs> a that's lady the big, gay I was going to say you got the haircut Please. for that's it. The biggest, it. That, that's their biggest that's her biggest demo i think i'm not saying that there she doesn't have others well i've been i've I have does, taken but. my husband to see kathy griffin and he's very proud to be this the the one straight guy there he's um <laughs> he's, he's owning it but he also laughs he thinks it's funny yeah he thinks she's funny so yeah i i loved her book i i read that yeah, I, re- I remember the book and i i the book uh, was really oh yeah i read it very quickly and i enjoyed it i'd argue that it's a generational thing on top of mm. gender too because mm-hmm. i like when Kathy Griffin, I kind of knew who she was, mm-hmm. but like I didn't know, I never watched her or anything before the Trump controversy came out. Like it was just like a name of like, oh, right. that's a person who's on TV that my yeah. parents watched once. Well, like, interesting. She's very yeah. so dishy in a fun way. And if you've seen her on any talk show, you kind of get her vibe. She's just like, if you had a girlfriend that was that fun and funny, you'd be hanging out with her all the yeah, time. Yeah, she's like uh, she's like a gossip columnist, but funny. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like there are some gossip people that just don't, they just like, this is what I heard and da 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 da. And she'll be like, well, this is what I saw and heard from this famous person. Has her and career come back? Yes. From, it has. He's and, right, Carnegie Hall. Okay. Yeah. And is she doing the New Year's Eve thing again? Does she get that gig back? Or? Oh, that's a good question. Can you guys? Oh Google yeah, she that? did lose that. CNN. She lost that. that was, I don't think she she's did losing lose that. that. Was it and CNN? They replaced her with Andy C- Cohen. Yeah. And it was Anderson Cooper and Andy. Anderson Cooper. Yeah. He's funny too, though. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Anderson Cooper. Yeah, they used to have a good time together. <laughs> they did. She was all they, over they, him. They liked each other a lot. Yeah. 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 He. I mean, they, she they, gives they, him the giggles. Yes. That's yes. true. Yeah. Yes. All right, which brings us to. On the screen. Oh, look, like, Jack. Oh, my God, you guys are on TV. Okay. <laughs> there's like nine right. cameras in here. Yeah, there's yeah, there are. Okay, so Michelle Wolf. <laughs> and the drone. Michelle. Did you see the drone? <laughs> are you guys ready Duh. to talk? Michelle Wolf. We're talking I, I, Michelle Wolf. She was fantastic at that uh, at the correspondence dinner. I thought she nailed it. Yes. I thought she was great, yeah. She was great. And then you guys know that. Okay, so this is a quote from her, from that set. She said, "I." she's talking about Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who was sitting there yeah. at the podium, and she goes, I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like, she burns facts, and then she uses the ash to make a perfect smoky eye. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's lies. Now, I think one of the things that was controversial was that when she said the word facts, people thought they heard the word fat. Fat. Oh. And Interesting. They, yeah. they just got outraged. And so the outrage was so severe that this year, the White House Correspondents Association has hired historical biographer Ron Chernow, and Michelle Wolf has feelings about it. You guys have her tweet? She tweeted, the WHCA are cowards. The media is complicit, and I couldn't be prouder. So how do you guys feel about her kind of ushering out the comedian or the roast type aspect of the dinner? Is it because Trump's president or... Yes. Well, Trump doesn't even go to it anymore. No, he, he, hasn't, he doesn't yeah, go. Yeah. Nor does he go to the Kenny Senator. All that stuff is better without him. Yeah. Who abs- would want absolutely. him anywhere? I didn't realize that they... I, I did not know that, that there's no longer a comedian uh, emceeing. And, well, for next and year. And let's, right? see, okay. let's see who shows up. Because part of... Even though people... Even though it's a really difficult audience and people just sit there because they're afraid to be seen laughing on camera at right. the wrong thing, mm. I don't think it's necessarily that the, com- the comics are bombing. I think it's that everyone's afraid to laugh. They're, True. They're, they're, with, yeah, they're they, right, right there. Yeah. yeah, they're with their um, co-workers <laughs> and there's cameras right there. So it's really tricky. But And I, I would love to see Chernow because I love I love his books yeah. and I think he's he's a genius. But let's see if he's going to do a tight 35. He's going to really kill him. He is sharpening it at the Chuckle Hut this weekend. (laughs) And but so your thoughts on that? 
Do you think that like after Trump is no longer in office, please God let it be soon, that <laughs> that will that will be back to having a comedian and the White House Correspondents Dinner will regain its sense of humor and understand that like yes, it's going to be edgy. That's what this is. Well, that's what the the uh, correspondence dinner was supposed to be about making uh, jibes at uh, people that you wouldn't normally jibe. Well, you know, for and, eight while solid there, years, like the, the funniest president. person there was Obama. Yeah, absolutely. You wouldn't want to yeah. follow that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. But he had writers too. Yeah, but he, of course. But he did him. He, he delivered. He did the job very yeah. well. Yeah. But he hired people that were funny, and he he surrounded himself with goodness and so he he would always right. nail it and then the comedian would be like oh geez see that's a little <laughs> bit of innocence that's kind of gone now ever since this new administration everything is so over the top you know yeah. or everything's taken seriously or everything's a security threat or we don't even know how to comport ourselves anymore because the norm is so you know the <clears throat> off and i think to be fair rails. that 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 environment has been created by everybody it's not just you know one group of people who of are course. creating I, it okay i think, I just want to make I think sure it's also i think it's also you can put some of the blame on the correspondence association because they i, I think part of why she got so much flack is because she went after everybody right hard she did mm. and so like the the association didn't have her back if she had just gone mm. after trump one i don't think the set would have been as good and two i think she wouldn't have gotten as much because she got hit from the left and the right. Yeah. Everyone was just like, she was way too mean. She was way too offensive. And it's because she went after CNN and she went after, she made fun of everybody. And I think they got mad and they're like, it. But she was making critical points. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like oh, a yeah. perfect example of the comedian being the truth teller that we all need to hear. That's for mm -hmm. sure. I just thought she was outstanding, and I'm. And I, she saved that one for the end too. She was like, yeah. like towards the end, she was like everybody. Right. She was like, I, you guys, say you hate Trump, but I think you like him. Oh man, yeah. he was He's like an so abusive good. boyfriend that you know you got to get away from. How but is you her just show going? Can't. She got a. Uh, she has a cable show, doesn't she? Does she met? It's a, oh, it's Netflix. Okay, she's so I, I wonder how I, it's doing. I was not. I have to admit, I this, I'm embarrassed, but I was not familiar with her at all. Uh -huh. And then she started her act, and I was like, "This is really funny," but I can just see how. You know, well, they're gonna, I, they're I gonna, agree. And, that. and by the way, every comic gets attacked after that. Everyone, yeah. no matter how good they, they are, all have. yeah, to a certain and, extent. But, yeah. but I heard, I heard her voice. Her voice is. You know, it's fun. It, it is, but yeah. I could just hear that's that's what they're gonna they're gonna zero in on her voice, and that's how they're gonna. <laughs> that's like the main thing they're gonna use to uh, mm -hmm. to to make fun of her. But well, uh, no, that was a great set though. She and the whole thing about <laughs> uh, what was it, uh, Handmaid's Tale. She's like, yeah. she asked the whole day. I was like, have you guys seen the Handmaid's Tale? <laughs> really, really? Because I thought you guys wrote it. Because <laughs> you guys, <laughs> it's uh, oh man. Uh, and of course, they didn't get it because they don't watch no, right. no. it. They have no idea what she's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just know that they're up to no good and they don't <laughs> want to be called out on it. Hey, we're sitting on the dais. That means that we're off limits, right? And then those were not the rules and they were like, wait, what? <laughs> so Leslie Jones says, stop being offended by comedians. Um, stop holding comedians to this standard. Stop doing it. Our job is to make the ugliest stuff funny. That's our job. We are court jesters. We are clowns. That's what we do. We come out and make this terrible situation laughable unless you want to cry for the rest of your life. Hmm. See, I can't be offended by comedians because I know how pathetic and sad comedians are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you, can't offend, you, you can't offend me if I you know that you're- You just want to hug them. Right. If I know that you're hurting and you're, you know, you're sort of weak the way that comedians are emotionally, then you can't offend me. You know what I mean? But it's an interesting if if you, if your thesis is correct that all comedians are weak, it's an interesting <laughs> method. I, I, I don't think I, I think I've spoke. The, the, Champagne all the, calls all comedians weak. <laughs> no, but you're saying like, look, if you're if if we're a bunch of eight year olds, yeah. the weakest kid could become the bully. Is being a comedian a a an accept socially acceptable form of bullying where you get to kind of be the attacker hmm. without so that people can't see your weaknesses? It, but it's. It depends on your target. Wow. Right? You're, it's a, it depends who you're going after. You That's know. deep. That's um, good. I like that. But I, I, I know that I can't be offended by. Yeah. yeah. Like for it, example, like Trump. Let's say mm -hmm. uh, I'm not. I'm not interested in Trump anymore. I'm more interested in the people around him. Mm. Who are protecting Complicit. him, and defending him, including who two years ago, we're going. Oh, no, he would including never. Including the good entire president. Republican Party, and then two years later, are now. Oh, what you now? You see that he's a good president. Yeah. You were wrong. Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Like, oh boy, did I have it wrong? It's like the, the kind of support he has now are from people who 
don't believe that he's a good president, but are glad that he's the president. So they're they're writing that benefit. I don't. Know, how did I get on? I, that? I think the way to get around that, at least in my head, is that most people don't really have anything that they actually believe in. It's completely driven by the political situation of the time. And if it's meat for them to say X, yes. you know, and it's a, you know, and I think that just continues. And so now it's like, ah, I think this is going to work. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's not a, a you know a particularly astute observation, but I think that's what's in play here. Well, I think they're saying, well, I would rather have him than Hillary because I want conservative justices and I want to be able to rape our environment and I want these other policies. So they just kind I of... I just want to masturbate in front of the environment. I don't need to... to but ask first. Further. You should always you ask. Should always ask. ask first. Is or this, is at least okay? order pizza. <laughs> um, yes, order the pizza, Jack. <laughs> A lady pizza delivery man. Come on. All right. It's Facebook feed time. And Joe, you, you've got some explaining to do. Oh, do I? Yeah, because here's a post from our friend Diane Diamond. Yes. We love Diane. Very pretty. And I will let you describe what the hell is happening here, Joe. Well, I'm just, uh, we were at an event on Saturday night in New Uh York City. A bunch of voiceover people, Jack. And so what happens when when voiceover people are all together? Is everybody like, hello? Oh, how are you? (laughs) How are the wife and kids? Yes. We'll be right back after this. People (laughs) say tis a lot. Tis. Tis tis true. Yeah, that's, it was an event. It was a voiceover um, holiday party Mm -hmm. uh, in New York City. Diane's great. I forgot that. um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're. Your friendship with Diane. I am friends. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's a, there were everybody. a bunch of photos that you could scroll through. Thank you through, for but... um, um, trying to get me in trouble there. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh so, there yeah, I am so, again. Yeah, oh. Who else? Who's there? Different kind of trouble you Famous, got going on now, uh, Who is that, Jack? VO people. I can't, I, I can't really it's see guy it myself. In a I don't have my glasses shirt. on. Yeah. And he's, he's married. So I want to the... be a part of this VO family. Do oh, you, that's right. You're Matt, in, you'd Matt. Be no, you'd I'm be not. so good. All you need is a David, laptop and David, a closet. David, David, you're, uh, you're in. <laughs> that's what okay, Louis C.K. Okay, says. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, what's Twitter trending? Today, what was Twitter trending is hashtag <clears throat> little known facts about Mrs. Claus. <laughs> so we have, who wants to read these? Santa's. I, I will. Okay, okay go right. Oh, no, no, go, no, please. Uh, please, go, Matt. Where am I looking? Right up there. <clears throat> Santa's her third marriage. <laughs> Little known facts about Mrs. Claus. <laughs> That's pretty cute. <laughs> what else? I wonder who she was married to before. She was once a North Pole dancer. Ah, mm. a North Pole <laughs> dancer. Look at the GIF. Yes. <clears throat> Number three. There we go. <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Claus. There she is. Hey, she met on. Santa on an online dating site called OK Cupid, Comet, Donner, and Blitzen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, Donner, actually. So I Donner. added yeah. to the chorus. The URLs to put, the top of the wall. My yes. tweet. My, my tweet <laughs> got got no love. Oh. But I'm going to say it out loud here. I, I added to the chorus <clears throat> hashtag um, little known facts about Mrs. Claus. She's Jewish. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well that's, done. that's very funny. Very little yeah. known. That's very, very good. Very little known. I want to yeah. say, now, what do you need to plug, Matt? Oh, yeah, Thank Matt. you for coming over. Oh, mm. what do I studio. need to plug? Oh, yeah. I, I, I guess I already talked about it. Vice, uh, yeah. starring Christian Bale as uh, Dick Cheney, of course. That's the first guy you think of. That's awesome, And so awesome, what do you dude. play? Because I can't, I cannot wait to see this movie. I'm so excited <laughs> know, about too. it. I love historical dramas. Uh, mm-hmm. Guys, get ready to bring this face up. Uh, right. I play Doug Fife, oh. uh, Undersecretary of, of Defense bring... for the Pentagon. A wow. Fife. <clears throat> otherwise known as a Bush toady. From the early two thousand. Here he comes. There he is, Douglas Fife. You play Doug Fife. I play Doug. Oh wow! Look at you. Well, <laughs> who does his hair? <laughs> did you meet him? No, no, no. You know what? Did you uh, read Doug about did it? not come out to watch the movie being made where we make fun of. So what's uh, great about this hair? is like of yeah. all the people that came in on that casting day. They were like, you're the fifiest. <laughs> Either Barney or Doug. We're trying to. <laughs> Louis on fire. Very good. Jack, what do you got going on? Um, actually, I'll be doing uh, narrating a Showtime um, uh, boxing thing. So Ooh. that's going to be coming out soon. Is that uh, um, a narration, like a, a story about it's like a ha- boxing? It's a half hour program on a big fight that's coming up with Canelo. and. Oh, very so, cool. Yeah, so that should be fun. Nice. Yeah. Love that. Joe. Good luck. Thank deal you. or no deal, deal starts deal. Uh, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Thirty-five episodes, and <gasps> I have Hollywood Game na- Game Night oh. with uh, Jane Lynch that comes back uh, next week. Do you hang out with Jane Lynch? Uh, I do not, oh. but I, I do work with her. Okay, and uh, she's extremely funny and oh. one of the kindest uh, people I know. Kindest, Guys, most human beings I've ever known. Back to me for a second. Yes, right, let's right, talk right. about Matt. <laughs> it was a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it was, <laughs> that was, a fi- that was 15 was quite seconds. A stretch. Quite a stretch. We've been yeah. talking for about 35, 40 minutes. What yeah. do you guys think of my voice? How's the timber? How's the, how's it, the low it, it's, end? It's, it's what it you do with good. it. I think I don't see why you're not working, honestly. You have a fantastic Wait a minute. Commercial. What do you mean he's not working? 
I'm, I'm <laughs> in in voiceover. Oh, I in see. In voiceover, see. yeah. It's Fife. yeah. Because it's all about your personality, and I would think that that would be fantastic on the radio and everything else. They oh, always okay. say, yeah. Matt, that it's not about the voice. It's not it's about, about the voice. what you do with the copy <laughs> and uh, and humor and what you, you bring can. to it. He's got a ton of personality. So you, you got that. You got the personality. Right. I yeah. think I'm a real I'm a really judgmental guy, though. Maybe that's that what's would work for true. me. Though. There's that, a lot of a lot of products that need judgment. Yeah, give, <laughs> give, give me a judgment read, real quick, Jack. <clears throat> like like okay, so <laughs> give me so, something to read. Starbucks, read. Starbucks, but judgy. Starbucks. <laughs> so, like, okay, first of all, that's how everybody would and should say. It. That was the first one. <laughs> you don't say Starbucks Star- with any other yeah, kind of exactly. joke. <laughs> oh my Starbucks. goodness! Uh, no, how about good. this? How about that's this? Good. Starbucks. That's better. But wait, there's another one. <laughs> and great slogan. Yeah. Right. Oh, Starbucks. Dude, that's there's awesome. another one. There's another one. No, that's good. I want to thank everyone for being around. with us. Thank Please, you. what are you doing? What are you, oh, what are you plugging? I have a plug away. I have this podcast that I do. Oh, things I found really, online. I have, to, I have to listen to it sometime. <laughs> yep. And then yeah. and then the kids in Santa Barbara that I teach stand up comedy to are, are putting on a show. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, hey, Lori never made it. Is it a oh, holiday ooh, show? Right. Now yeah. I'm worried. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be a holiday show. It's going to have Lori Rogan Camp of Virginia Jones. Uh-huh. And Matt, I'll book you for the next time we do a show. Sure. Yeah, like, I would love to do it. Comedians in, in Santa Barbara. What are we, oh, chopped liver? Do you have a, a tight, like, a word? 15 yeah, to 20 clean no. for We're the Starbucks. Jews? Yeah, I don't have clean for the Jews? <laughs> 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 this is up is that in the restaurant in Santa Barbara? No, it's oh. at the JCC. Mrs. Oh, Klaus is like, yeah. I'll support it. So there will yeah. be dreidels. Oh, of course. Dreidels. <laughs> so I want st- to thank Connor McGuinn. Connor McGlynn, I'm getting closer every week, right? <laughs> yeah, Francesco Demanda, Demanda, Blaine McFadden, David Court. Yes. I am Louise Planker, Matt Champagne, Jack. Daniel. Jack Daniel, wow. Joseph Briano, Dina Friedman. Dina. And I'm worried now about Lori, so please call. Okay, right. All right, we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>